Hey, what's up? Leron here and today we're gonna paint this lovely flutist statue and I have two things in mind. One, I personally want to practice not going too dark as I tend to go and I want to preserve the watercolors transparency and light. And second is I want to show you how by using more water you get your washes to flow better and you have more time to make uh, changes and to fix things and to blend edges and all of that because a, a lot of the the beginner mistake i see fall into the category of not using enough water and not using the medium as it should be so these two coincide nicely a lot of water keeping it light so i hope you're going to enjoy this one we're going to jump straight into the painting process but I will put down below the reference photo and perhaps my sketch too so that you can start with making that and then start painting together with me. So we'll get started and as I mentioned my emphasis here is on getting that nice flowy look and to show you that more water means more time to work things out to figure them out uh, and to just enjoy the best qualities of watercolor. Uh, now I'm gonna use my new Escoda brushes. Uh, they were kind enough to send me their three new uh, plein air sets and I already tested some of these in the previous videos. This time I'll be using the green set. It's not my first time using it, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And I think right now my favorite is actually the black set. Uh, but these have really good um, water capacity. So I don't know, I, I found them to be really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is, work um, on matching to some extent the temperature of what I see. Uh, so you see it's a bit cold here and I'm gonna start with that kind of a thing. So to add, to make it colder, I'm just gonna add some blue to the mix. The, what happens here, a couple of things. First, I didn't mind moving straight into the painting process with no drawing. I actually traced this because I wanted to get quickly to the stage of painting. I, I don't usually trace for watercolor, but it's okay to trace. You don't have to um, draw everything from observation. So just to give you that permission. And also, this doesn't matter as much. What I wanna put more emphasis on is wetness. I want to I want to make sure that you use enough of a wet wash. So I have a test paper here. Let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so here is what we have a very pale wash. I'm good with that. I don't want it to get too dark here. Um, and what's funny is I have a bit of opaque white paint here in the palette, which makes this look a little more milky. And I like that too. So let's go with that. Uh, and we'll start with a bit of a, a cool color. Now, I'm actually gonna start with the smaller shapes I see here. So this is way too much water and wetness. I just wiped some of it off. And here we go. Now, let me zoom in a bit because I'm gonna be working on his face a lot now. It always takes me a few moments to realize that I'm gonna have to zoom in, so that's funny. So what I see here is a bit of coolness near the bottom of this area, and then a bit of warmth up top. So let's start with the coolness. And this brush has a really nice tip, so I don't have to try hard to get the right shape, which is really cool. Now I'm just wiping it on the towel and then picking back up some of the excess moist because we're using a lot of water here. Now for the lower part of the palette that you can see, I'm gonna mix a bit of a warmer mix here. And I'm gonna use that for the top part of this. And you see they mix, and uh, because, of, because this area is wet, they mix pretty nicely actually. And it may even look a little too dark right now, uh, but don't worry about it. As soon as it's gonna dry, it will get um, much, much lighter. And we are after that lighter value here. So we have a bit of cool uh, colors here to the left as well. So I'm just incorporating a bit of that blue here as well. And I'm just working my way around the highlights. Now, I did wanna talk a bit about how I did the drawing here. So if you uh, if you can see that the drawing here is very clear, it's just the shapes of light and shadow. If you can get to a point where this is what your drawing looks like, you're gonna have a much easier time to follow along and then later when you need to maybe add some details within the shadows, it's gonna be much uh, easier because you already established their main shapes, okay? So this is just something to, to watch out for and, and try and uh, create in your works perhaps. I'm gonna switch to a bit of a um, burnt sienna kind of uh, color here and making sure to keep it flowing you see I can go back and, and continue this wash it's still wet because I'm using enough water and in fact all of this area is dark so try to focus on the large shapes you're gonna fill up and again I'm gonna have links to everything in the uh, description box so you can find the exact way I the, the exact reference and maybe even um, 
my my drawing i'm gonna put a very basic um screenshot of it uh, i didn't take a picture of it unfortunately so it's gonna be as high of a quality as i can maybe not ex exceptionally high sorry about that uh, but in any case, you see how I have time to work through these areas. Now I could take go back and do wet and wet here as well, but I'm not even gonna do that now. I may add these details later on. For now, let's keep to um, the the main areas of uh, shadow. So here we go. This is a shadow. This is a shadow, and uh, having a good brush that has a really good tip can really help here. Um, but I used more blunt brushes in the past. And it went okay, so it's not the end of the world if you don't have something as sharp as I'm using right now. Uh, following the shape of the eyebrow, this entire thing is in the shadow. And then we have this, you see, shadow next to the nose. Now let's turn the heat up a bit because we're getting close to the light, um, to the light side of the nose. And I think it will be a cool little effect to show that. Let me waste some burnt sienna here, then come back here. Fill in all of this area, I cannot emphasize enough how I'm enjoying these brushes. Their tips are so darn good. Um, oh yeah, I of course went over the highlight. Let me get some real quick, some toilet paper. Here we go, I've been enjoying it too much. So I went over the highlight without noticing. Now here I'm keeping a buffer. The shadow ends somewhere around here, but the thing is I'm gonna blend that edge. So to blend that edge, I need this gap. Now I'm gonna take another brush. This is the smaller one, the Ultimo number four. I'm gonna use that to bring in, I'll need to dry it first and clean it thoroughly. Uh, and blending isn't easy, so do your best. I, I mess it up all the time still. But uh, hopefully this gives it a bit of a softer edge here. And as always, as I show you, you can always use just the toilet paper and dab. But this time I'm not going to do it because I actually like uh, what it turned out. Now, all the way down to the flute, um, we're going to have a shadow. We have a shadow here. Let's let's close off this shape real quick. Okay, I'm going to um, make the pace a little faster because I'm slowing it down because it's a tutorial. Uh, but let's go over these shapes here. And you see very wet this washes and, and um, you have to find the right balance I suppose of how you do that um, because you do lose some control if you go uh, very wet you get gain more time but it's a little harder sometimes to paint the shapes you want accurately because the paint puddles and then it can spill a bit so just find the way it works for you um, and you can always just dab it on the towel for a moment and you know uh, but I really love how this one's coming up. Um, I think it's going to be a really nice little painting. By the way, I, uh, I've been asked a lot lately about um, whether there's a place to buy the paintings. So finally, at last, I started uh, an online gallery. I'm still working on it. Oh, by the way, that's a shadow. I'm still working on building it, but it's gonna be up really soon and you'll be able to uh, see the paintings that are there for sale and it's gonna say the, the dimensions of them so that because I know a lot of people want to know the exact size of the painting they want to buy and the price and everything. You don't want to send me an email and then figure it out. So um, this is something I've been uh, really wanting to do for a while now and I'm, I'm happy to say that finally I'm gonna have a proper gallery soon. Now here's a nice trick. I'm not gonna spread out to a large and complex area. You see this area here? This is just in one go. So let me just close that off. I'm gonna start with cool, like so. And I'm really trying to enjoy it because the last couple of processes have been challenging and I did want to, and now I'm warming it up by the way. But I did want to show you some more complex subjects, but the, you know, the, the con of doing that kind of thing. And here I am going, connecting it to the flute already. I want this to be, to flow really well, so I'm connecting them. Um, the con of doing very complex processes is that uh, you have to be more concentrated. And I find that I can get a bit frustrated if I have to focus a lot on filming and making sure that camera runs okay and that you see everything you know now I need to move it make sure you see it's just not as pure of an experience as just painting for myself and I want to always have that side of me that grows 
um, you know, with the art. And by the way, I haven't mentioned, but I will say it again in case I said it just in the intro. I'm um, the approach I'm using here is very simple. I'm flattening it all out. So what I'm what I'm having is basically light and dark, and that's it. I'm just putting in a wash that's fairly um, mid value, kind of light, and whatever is very light is going to stay white. So that's the the gist of it here. Now notice this muscle shape here. Um, it's blended in an interesting way. What it, what happens here is that here it's blended, but the bottom part's a little sharper. So I'm going to keep it sharp, okay? And I'm going to continuously blend this until I get a nice soft edge, and then I'm going to use a bit of a tissue to soften it even more. And we're good. We also have a very gentle shadow uh, up here very light but I do want to get that in and hopefully you can still see let me move this around a bit uh, this part is fairly sharp so I don't need to do anything for that but I will add a bit of a shadow here like so here we go let these two connect I actually like um, the way they look and I'll connect these two you know what, a spontaneous decision. And because I used a wet wash, this part was still wet, so I can connect them. And then I can kind of blend this edge in. It can be a little hard to blend with a brush that has really good water capacity, because you need to dry it a bit in order to truly blend sometimes. So do it several times until you feel like you've got the right uh, amount of blendiness. <laughs> um, and now with that, um, I want to sharpen this corner a bit, like so, and the shape of the muscle here, here we go. Uh, now I want to start working on the left section. I'm going to use a bit more warmth for his hands and maybe add even a bit of yellow to the mix here, while still maintaining some kind of neutrality. I don't want it to be too, you know, too strong. Um, so hand. Well, we're gonna go back to this area later. Let's work on those uh, fingers holding the flute. Now, this is actually the flutist. And you see if you have small bloopers, if you didn't get the shape exactly as you wanted, it's not the end of the world. This is all about just rendering them as you see them as much as you can. See here I touched this wash and it got a little wet, that's fine. I don't mind that. And I'm continuing with this formula of just two values, light and dark. And notice how this immediately gives it this nice sense of three-dimensionality. And I'm really working hard on not going too dark um, with my paintings, because I do tend to do that a lot. Uh, and I want to uh, be able to go just as dark as necessary, or as dark as the reference dictates. Um, so here we have a shadow at the base connecting to the shadow here. And what's great about doing this uh, kind of a thing this way is that um, you just have a lot of time and it's very similar to drawing because you're just going over the light and shadow shapes. Um, and this is great, especially if you're scared of large washes, you know, keep the painting size small too. Um, and that really, I think, is encouraging because you don't have too much pressure to preserve a, a very large and complex wash. It just takes a lot of the pressure off you. Uh, and that's a really good thing. So this finger is a little more, uh, a little cooler, so a little blue here. Now here's a really important part. I do want to blend this area because the flute is round. So let me blend it right in like so. Here we go, just help it move a bit with a wet brush. And we're back to the other section. Actually, let's use a bit of green on the hand to give this a sort of a wither, weathered um, statue look, so it's still very neutralized, like so. Let's add more red to it like this. And actually, almost everything here is in the shadow, so let me just go over this entire shape here. And you see how I'm not really creating an outline then filling it up. That will give you some uneven results. I'm working either in one direction or from center outwards, okay? Uh, I 
find that it's a much better way of getting an even result that looks good. Now here we can already connect to all of the shadows underneath, so we might as well do that to get as even of a result as possible, okay? So shadow around here, connect to the finger, don't, don't worry about, you know, making a separation there. What you do want to worry about is the areas of light, so if you see an area of light, you skip that and you paint around it, like uh, the uh, muscles here that kind of protrude, a bit more flow in water. I'm fine with getting it pretty gray down the bottom here um, because it's an area that's not as visible and we're ending it around the abs I think. So something like that and hopefully these shapes of light and shadow that we drew based on the reference will end up making sense. Okay, sometimes it's kind of a, um, um, a gamble um, you don't know if it will read properly, uh, but I think here we did a fine job. So I think it will read nicely. Now here, this is also kind of, it's not really a dark shadow, so let me actually leave a highlight here. I'm gonna leave this highlight here, but it does connect to the hand, so let's go warmer. You see how one thing leads to another thing leads to another thing, and if you can learn how to render shapes like that, uh, you're golden. That's really... Uh, one of the major skills of watercolor is to find the connections. Uh, for example, there's this strap here, so I'm going to connect that to the shadow of the hand, see? Um, if you can find these connections and, and work them in your work, it just simplifies, it makes it look good. This part isn't finalized yet because we haven't finished it. Let me just finish it real quick. Um, if something doesn't read well, you may need to... Usually what happens is you need to either darken stuff up or lift stuff up or correct something that doesn't work at the moment, so don't worry about that kind of a thing. Now, let me dump in some coolness to this left side. I don't know why, I want to warm it up the more it gets to uh, the light source, so we'll go with a bit of blue here. I actually really, really like the way this one's developing so far. And finally, I'm gonna use a bit of yellow to blend it. Uh, this isn't something I do a lot, but let's do that. See here? It's very wet, so it flew back to the left, but that's fine. Now, a bit darker, and we'll get this detail of the um, elbow. And I think that works nicely. Now, here, notice how I can expand this wash to the rest of the hand, and it will look good. I actually am contemplating now whether I want to add a background to this, or I kind of like it the way it is. Because I like the soft feeling that it has right now, and when we once we zoom in later, zoom out, sorry, later on, uh, you'll see just how I think an interesting of a of a job we we did here. Uh, but anyway, let's move on with fingers. And I really hope you'll enjoy this kind of a video. There isn't a lot of strategy; it's more about the action. I know that some of my videos don't do as well. Um, I know that, for example, painting masters. It's a series I do want to keep, but I do know that it gets less views, generally speaking, compared to the, you know, uh, lessons and uh, tutorials. But I am doing some of these series because they interest me and because I want to keep some variety on the channel. So hopefully you're still able to enjoy uh, the parts that you do enjoy about the channel. Um, and I'm actually curious to know if you find some types of videos more boring than others. Uh, these are the nails, by the way. Uh, let me know. I'll, I'll try and do more of what's interesting while maintaining, you know, the authenticity and, uh, and maintaining my own personal interest in what I do. Now, here I didn't blend this line. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll just move on. It's not really uh, as important. Um, now, at this stage, we're pretty much done with everything. Let me just straighten this finger. It looks awkward make it a little more parallel, uh, but we're pretty much uh, done. There isn't a whole lot to add here. We missed this kind of a sh small shadow here at the face, the crown, hair, whatever that is, uh, and some smaller shapes here as well that help to render the shape of the head. Um, so now we're at a stage where this is done. Let me zoom out a bit. So we'll now work some background into this, and the main thing for me with this kind of a painting is I don't want the background to detract from this main figure. So we're gonna keep it extremely light, 
in these areas. Maybe go a little darker here, there's a tree or whatever. So I'm actually gonna start rendering it from the center. Because this is such a thin spot, I can just start here, finish this section, and then continue with that. I won't have too much trouble. So let's go with the dark value, and it's just a mix of what I have on the right side of the palette. It's just a big bunch of mud. I'm gonna add a bit of the phthalo blue, French ultramarine, uh, sort of quinacridone rose, a bit of a bit of everything really, but then I'm gonna increase uh, the yellow and blue, because I want this to read as sort of a green. So here we go. That's, I think, a good value. It's not too dark. It's gonna spread out and get a little lighter, hopefully. Let's see, no, I'm gonna add a bit more water. I want this to be light. I really want this to be light. So here we go, that's more like it. And then I'm just gonna move the paint around painting carefully around our statue. Hopefully that will make the highlights more impactful. It will give them a new context. Right now they're in the context of the background is as light as them. But as soon as we kind of border that background off, what happens is the viewer gets a better understanding of just how light some of these highlights are, okay? Uh, values are contextual as well, just like temperature and color. So many things that we like to think are absolute are actually highly contextual. Um, meaning that a color can seem very warm or very cool depending on the surrounding colors or the surrounding values or you know, all of these things really have a strong influence. Uh, so what you wanna make sure to do is try not to be too confined by uh, what you think and try to maybe consult your intuition in many cases. In many cases, it's just the only way to go, really. Um, but if something looks off, maybe it is off, you know. Uh, let's fix the shape of the mouth here. I really couldn't have done that with some of my other brushes. It's just these Skodas are so sharp. I do plan on doing a proper review soon. Uh, but for now, I'm just using them because I want to make sure you know, usually I'll do a first impression. Now here I'm switching over to a light blue for the sky, but it has to be very, very light, lighter than the value here, significantly. Uh, in any case, I am uh, planning on doing a proper review. Usually I do the first impressions kind of thing, but I don't want to do a first impression with this uh, brush. I want it to be a proper conclusive review, okay, of all the four sets. Maybe I'll do that individually, I don't know yet. Now here we may get a background, we may not, I'm not sure, uh, because I put some very wet washes next to the drier, um, darker ones, but I think it will be fine. Uh, a good trick for you is if you're using a hair dryer to dry your paintings, just use that here in the area where you're afraid you'll get the, um, uh, the, the background, and usually it solves it, so, you know, usually that'll, uh, it'll dry it fast enough so that it won't happen. Now onto the next side, and here we go back to our quote-unquote dark value. But I'm going to take some more liberties here and go a little lighter even. Now I may get a background here too, because I'm touching it again with wet paint over drying paint. Uh, but I'm fine with that. So let's go over this like so, keeping this section fairly light. I don't want to rotate it because the page because that then it just adds all sorts of challenges when editing the video and honestly I don't feel like going through them so sorry about that but I'm just gonna fill in uh, the entire background here now there is a place for consideration of whether you want this to go darker because here it's light but I'm actually gonna keep this entire left section fairly light my gut tells me to be very careful here, so let's keep it light. I love it. We're gonna make this look dark. I absolutely love it. Instead of going dark here and trying to contrast it with what we have, let's try and have the background complement what we have. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's good. Now, uh, I will switch to some blue here. That's where the tree ends. So, very, that's way too much, by the way, so I'm gonna <laughs> water it down. And here we go. Tone it down a bit. 
it's not at the very center of the painting I don't want it to be too poppy and I'm just going around these shapes I think I forgot a shadow here so I'm gonna actually it's a good opportunity let's connect them there's a shadow coming through here I'm just gonna connect it and how will we know that it's a shadow because I'm gonna leave a highlight just one moment we're getting there so this is the left section and here I'm gonna leave um, a small highlight to the left and I think we're good to go like that there we go keep things fairly light I'm gonna um, patch things up here just to get the right shape and get rid of some of the white uh, gaps you know these white gaps are dangerous and I see them a lot uh, so sometimes it's just a better practice to not leave it's too strong starking uh, white gaps just makes the figure feel more incorporated into the scene when you don't have them um, there we go and I think with that we're done so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna allow it a few seconds to dry we're gonna come back and add just a couple of small 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 touches not too dark and um, we're gonna talk about why I'm even doing that then we'll remove the tape and wrap it up so the painting is fully dry now here we because we're done with the main part we have the privilege of deciding on where to add details now why would you even want to add details if you ask me I would keep it this way I wouldn't necessarily add too much but here's where you may want to add something and that is mainly just to direct the viewers attention and give them maybe something else to look at so I think the face here could be a really good place to do that and here's my basic plan what I want to do is add some details to the eye and the eyebrow under the nose the mouth a bit maybe ear and hair and I think we'll leave it at that and this way the face will come more to the front now it's already a major point of interest because of the strong contrast here with this dark patch so maybe I'll also add a bit of details here and that way we have you see we have one clear focal point and then a second one with the hands and the flute and the details there it's obviously another focal point okay and also patch things up here with the flute there's a small part that I missed let me just add it now real quick actually just here just a very small section there we go uh, but in any case let's uh, get going with that so I'm not gonna need too dark of a color because we're keeping things fairly light still so I'm mixing this kind of a neutral thing here that's as dark as it is right now you see and I think that'll work so let's just try it out under the nose we have a clear shadow and under the you know nostril so let's do that and you already you can tell let me zoom in just a bit so hopefully already you can tell that there is a bit more attention brought to this area of the nostril now we do have some strong shadows here around the eye so let me get that kind of a thing in and I do want to get some of the actual iris and all of those details in so now you can better see them making it even look a bit more like a mysterious figure uh, we have a bit of a shadow here behind the nostril a bit of a shadow that I'm making a little more exaggerated of the other eye and then the eyebrow now for the eyebrow I'm gonna use a bit of a warmer value just for the lower section here hopefully that makes sense the mouth same kind of thing you just want to follow its shape carefully and figure out where the shadow can be beneficial so I think just between the lips there perhaps under the lip just a very gentle touch so now we have some more of the shape of the face in um, we have the ear here so just a bit of extra dark value in there uh, under it maybe a bit in the beard just to show its shape you see and he does have a couple of curls let's go a bit cooler now right around here this there's a strong separation here between the I don't know if it's the crown or hair strands that you usually see on these kinds of statues so let me make that a little more prominent like so a bit of a curl here a bit of a curl here like so and you know what I think let's dab some of these out I don't want them they're too um 
what do you call it? They're too separated from everything else, so I don't want to, to make them too strong. And then we'll get this kind of a thing going here for the crown. There we go. I think we're good with the face, so I don't want to add anything to that. Now here, I think this strap could work nicely because it can lead us to the face. So let's go for that. And I'm just going to add four. One, two, probably three even. Three. And this is nice. I'm not going to touch that. Maybe a bit darker here. You see how that builds up the shape? Now I could add a bit details to the hand. What? Let's be very careful here. Just to make some of the shapes feel a little more well defined. But you know what? I'm actually gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna stop now because I'm, I'm at it, running the risk of doing too much. And I would love to explore doing more here. Adding some more shadows, making some areas a little more prominent still. Um, but I think the whole purpose with this painting is to leave a lot for the viewer to decide on. So let me zoom out. We're gonna remove the tape and wrap it up. So here we go, removing the tape. I hope you enjoyed this one. And again, my goal is to keep it super duper light, uh, even to the point of me um, double thinking and thinking all the time, is it too light? But I want to find that other extreme because it's very easy for me to go too dark and uh, that's just something I want to avoid. And I will find my balance hopefully uh, with time. So here it is, final result. Let's look at it a bit zoomed in as well. I think it turned out really, really nice. Uh, and with that, let's wrap it up face to face. So here's the final result. And again, my emphasis here was on two things, keeping things light and getting the water to flow. I just find that using watercolor the way they were meant, so to speak, to be used and allowing them to move has huge benefits and it's always helpful. It's always helpful. Now, two other notes. First, you want to get good paper if you're going to use very wet washes. For me, that's Saunders Waterford and Arches. Um, a lot of the more um, basic types of paper buckle, dry unevenly. It's just not fun. And with these papers, you know it will work right. I have a link to all the materials I use uh, in the description box below as always. And these Escoda brushes, I've been really enjoying them and I will uh, do a proper review soon. Now, one Last note, I've been asked a lot about where uh, people can buy the paintings and I finally started, uh, as I mentioned, I think in the video, an online gallery, a proper one. So if you want to get a painting and you want to see the prices and you want to see the sizes and everything, uh, I will soon start linking to it down below. It's still, I'm working on the finishing touches, but hopefully that will be a place for you to get a painting. Um, so that's something I've been asked about a lot and I just postponed and postponed, but now it's finally time. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Drop a like and subscribe if you still aren't. I post tons of stuff and it means the world to me to get to more people and help more people and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.